a tip for like if you're filming makeup and stuff um i would not say zoom in immediately but film with it in the regular thing when you edit then um uh, pan the screen to where you can zoom it bigger or smaller for beauty shots and stuff like this i've learned when filming hair when filming makeup stuff like that um especially when i really had my shop <clears throat> or my salons should i say um that always gave me the best quality because then i had somewhere to go or like if i wanted to put it on my business card you know it, the shot wasn't um distorted so that's just a little tip for any of y'all that's out there trying to figure out how to do that stuff so you can put it on business cards or thumbnails on instagram whatever film it in real time and then zoom it in if you need to. Do a little bit more than I normally would do on my makeup today. I'm gonna put a little translucent powder on my brows just to kind of like, you know, adhere them a little. Dealing with people, right, that kind of like try to speak against, you know, they try to create a, a doubt or fear in whatever your plans are, right? If y'all have been following me for a long time, then y'all know that I'm a person who, um, I typically believe that when God gives you something, cause I'm a person of prayer and all that first, I know I clown and do everything else. But when God gives you something, it's for you. It's not for everybody else. You really don't have to share with everybody else. It's your gift. It's, it's what he has given you. Um, and I believe that a lot of times when we get to sharing because we're so excited or even sometimes because we have doubt or fear, we get to sharing and we allow other people's opinions, fears, projections, things like that to start um, influencing prior to just stepping out on faith, making you a plan. Um, you know, I'm guilty of it. I remember prior to me moving here to Texas, hell, e even before that, like when I was talking about, you know, going to hair school um, and my vision for myself, the career path I had for myself, it was not the career path that my family had for me, you know, but I knew it wasn't so much that I wasn't happy. It was something I was like, well, yeah, you know, I can do this, but this is not what I want to do and I think a lot of people kind of go into cosmetology or even teaching um, as a backup because they feel like well shit I failed at this let me go try this because this is quick money and although it may be easy quick money um, and very lucrative if you don't have the skill or the business plan behind it um you're not going to do well. So I'm saying all that to say this, y'all. You think people weren't telling me, no, like, oh, girl, don't do that. You ain't, That's not a career. That's not a real career. You won't have any benefits. You won't have this. You won't have that. If I don't listen to people, I wouldn't be like where I'm at. And a lot of these people were family. Um, a lot of these people judged. A lot of these people had a lot to say. A lot of these people um pushed a lot of their insecurities and their fears and their things. But then once I started doing it and accomplishing the things that I was accomplishing, then, you know, it was like, even with some of them, they never could really accept it. If that makes sense. It was still like, Oh, she's struggling. She did, she that. And I ain't about to sit on camera and act like I ain't never struggled. I ain't going to act like I don't still have struggles. You know, I, that's never been me. Um, I think just like the next person I have lived check to check, uh, especially in, and being a cosmetologist, I've, I've had multiple jobs um, just to make sure that I made ends meet. But one thing that I never did was gave up on the vision that God gave me. And when God would give me visions or God would give me things, um, I started learning to stop asking, asking family. Um, well, what do you think about this? Actually, sometimes when I would share with friends, my friends would be the, the bigger supporters than my family. And not necessarily because my family meant me bad. I just think like sometimes with family, 
they over insert themselves and they get so caught up in what you're doing and how they can advise you and what they can tell you and you know all of this stuff like that that they not even really focusing and taking their own um advice so to me what i would say to anybody um no matter what age you are because let me tell you something here on youtube people try to be like oh you know like especially when i was in my 30s so now that i i just made 40 this year I can only imagine, you know, I've had people kind of say discouraging things about, you know, quitting, um, trying to tell me what aesthetic I don't have, what aesthetic I need, you know, what things I would have to do um, in order to be successful and stuff like this. And I guess the difference with me is like, although I would love for, for YouTube to be lucrative for me again or love for youtube to just be lucrative for me in general um i'm trusting god on that process and i have not wavered in that um and although i may reach out and ask for advice i also understand that you know to some people um even with me being smaller when you see the things that I do, I, I can become a threat. So, you know, you have to, for one, have an open heart and ask God for clarity anytime when you're dealing with people. Um, and ask God for discernment to show you what it is you should or should not be um, taking into your spirit, to your soul. Y'all, um, one thing about me, I am a, a praying person. I do my prayer candles. I believe in holy herbs. I do the whole thing. Um, now, a lot of people, because I'm from South Lake Charles, you know, they'll try to be like, oh, she do voodoo. I don't do voodoo. I don't practice voodoo. Um, honestly, I wasn't really even raised doing prayer candles and stuff like that. It's something that, you know, at, on my own, I have developed and I, I started doing. And regardless of what people may feel or how they feel about it it's just me it's just it's just a different way that makes me feel more connected to God when I'm praying and I'm confessing and I'm just doing things like and then because I am such a uh visual person and an analytical person a lot of times I'll write my prayers I'll just take an ink pen or a pencil and I'll just lightly write my prayer on that candle that I'm burning and I do it with holy herbs and oils that um, are from the Bible and I'll infuse those into my candles and I'll let that candle burn and for me it's like I know that I've already spoke that prayer and gave that prayer to God and I'm leaving it there with God and I'm trusting God so every time that I light that candle I'm reminded of that, that step of faith and what I'm doing and, and why um, I'm, I'm on the journey in in path that I'm on so you know I think when it comes to dealing with family or friends who um, may try to instill fear thought um, project their own things onto you whether positive or negative I think that you should take take a step back and pray take a step back take a step back and pray ask God if that is a person that he put into your life like a ram in the bush type situation to um, help you you'll know when is God sent y'all you'll always know when is God sent so I think for me that's how I deal with that because had I listened to a lot of people I would have lost a lot of blessings and there are some blessings and opportunities that I missed out on that time and I guess now you know, because I don't like to live in regret. I just look back and I think like, you know what? Maybe, maybe had I done it, I would be here, 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 and here. But it's an opportunity that I know can be created again. Because if it was created before, it'll come again. Like I hate when people be like, I'll, I'll never get that opportunity again. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity. What's meant for you is never a once in a lifetime opportunity. Y'all remember that. If it's meant for you, it is never a once in a lifetime opportunity. Okay? Um, never. It, it will never. What switch say? There'll never be a bad. It'll never be a once in a lifetime opportunity.
opportunity, y'all. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if y'all can see my brows, but they just look so good. I'll probably try to zoom in for y'all. Um, and if you like them a little bit lighter, I kind of like mine's because I had them um, done with ombre. She never finished this brow, and I was supposed to go back, and so I never kind of went back. But if you want to lighten it, I usually just take concealer and do maybe three to four strokes. I'll go up kind of like to my arch a little bit. Well, that's more than three to four right there. So tomorrow is Christmas Eve. And y'all, I don't know what it is. We got the Christmas spirit over here, but it don't. It definitely don't feel like it's Christmas. It feels like Christmas break for us, but it does not feel like Christmas. I'm going to let that dry down a little bit before I, um, you know, call me through. You know, y'all, if if. You take my advice on what I'm telling you, it's going to always help you kind of like propel yourself to whatever your goals are and, and reach your goals. Um, for me, I've always been a person that I do short term, long term, middle term goals. I write stuff down. I'll put it on a piece of paper and put it in my Bible so that when I read my Bible and I open um, the word, I see it. I'll put it in my phone. I'll put it in my uh, little mini calendars. Like I am a, I am a person that write, y'all. Like that's what I do. I write where I write. I always kept a diary. I always kept certain things like that. This is just what um, I do. I might need to open these up, huh? If I'm about to be using them today. Um, these them Sonya brushes that I just bought. Sonya, try to charge me twenty dollars for a brush, girl. Girl, in this economy, girl. Um, so <laughs> y'all, that's like, and honestly, start like I know I tell y'all that all the time, but how are you gonna reach a goal if you don't start? If you keep allowing something to tell you, oh, I might not have this, and oh, I'm gonna start, but I need to get this first. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. So it opens and it pushes the brush through. I'm not anywhere near doing my makeup just yet, but I like this. It's a protective cut. I like that. I can sit my brush like this. Now, the only thing I would say is like maybe I wouldn't want to leave it in this thing um, just because if I was traveling with it, yes, so that I don't mess up my bristles. But just storing it, no. I need air to hit this. Cause I don't want no types of bacteria or anything getting on it, but I do like the case. Um, yeah, you gotta start, y'all. You can't, you can't say you want a bit, not even a business. You can't say you want a career or something life changing. If you're an at home mom, because I've been an at home mom before. If you're an at home mom, you know, you gotta start implementing things to make you be the most successful in your day to day. If you are. Um, a career woman who works in an industry or even if it's you're at a job and you're wanting to get to a career you can't keep saying oh man I, I can't afford if I if I don't do this I'm not gonna be able to afford this so I have to wait until I can save up this to do if you keep trying to save up and save up and save up to do it you're gonna be working for that person or that company or whatever it is for a long time so you have to at some point Take a step out on faith. I'm not telling you to go out and put yourself in harm's way. No, but y'all, you can do it. Like when I moved to Texas, let me tell you, even though I moved to North Texas with a hefty lump sum of money, I moved up here with probably about, uh, I say almost close to 20K is, is what I moved with. Um, but when I first moved to Texas, like when I moved to Beaumont, y'all, we may have had, I, I'm so serious. We may have had between the two of us, maybe two, $300 in our bank account. And you can't even really count that and say that that's what we had in our bank account because we had kids. So what I'm saying all that to say, y'all, it can be done. Um, you know, it, it can be done. I think we all endure hardships. We all go through things. Um, 
never ever ever feel like it's just you i just think like a lot of people don't come on and talk about it you know people don't come on and and really tell you the truth about like their day to day they show you what they want to show you um is several influences that i watch and you know yeah as they grow stuff may change but it's a lot of them that you know they be out here buying this and buying that and then they turn around and now all of a sudden they shopping at Saks and fifth and they shopping over here and they shopping over there i think for me i've always shopped in those places but i just never came on youtube and really showed a lot of those places i have a lot of luxury stuff but i don't come on youtube and just disclose everything like that um i guess i was just raised not to be kind of like a, a bragger or a showboater or stuff like that and so that's kind of like why um i choose to not i guess just just do that now i do show different luxury um items that i bought or things like that because i like to review those items um i like to show y'all what i have on you know that's that's just me i'm thinking i might go with this kim k i don't know i don't know what i want to put on my eyes i think i want to do a single shadow y'all know growing when i was growing up single shadows was the things that's why when you go back and watch all the movies like wait, wait and take sale with whitney houston and stuff like that and you see Angela Bass's makeup or Whitney Houston's makeup or, you know, stuff like that. You always see them single shadows. Sometimes them single shadows be hitting y'all. So you just, you know. I know I had pulled out that Fenty palette because I wanted to, I'm trying to figure out. I'm looking at the Kim K palettes that I have and I'm looking at the Fenty palette that I have. And I'm trying to see which one I want to put on my lids for today. I'm not going to, y'all remember when I first started YouTube, how I used to do kind of like the whitish or like really light tan going into the brown with the red lip. That's still like my signature makeup look now. Yeah, but y'all, that's how you're going to reach your goals. You just have to start and you have to trust God and position yourself. You have to position yourself for success. Start stepping out of your comfort zone and meeting people. Meet people that can, um that are doing what it is that you want to do meet people that um you know that you i don't want to say you know that you just look at it as like an inspiration and talk to them and you know kind of pick their brains and listen to their their i'm not telling you pick their brains and copy their style but i'm telling you to like pick their brains and listen to their journey but don't do so much research you know, as in to not build an authentic um, friendship. Girl, that, that Fenty is really, this is the um, Bomb Posse eyeshadow palette. Y'all got so many palettes and I just really don't ever pull them out. Um, I like to stipple it on into the corner of my eye, right? And then I get to blending, but I like to put, deposit what I want first before i start let me go to my bigger mirror definitely y'all once you start to position yourself once you start to, to um walk in your purpose know your purpose know your wealth um you'll reach your goals because everybody's goals are different your goals for yourself um whether they're short term medium term long term um you know today term you will start to accomplish those things. You will start to see yourself um, really broadening who you are as a woman. I think for me, I've always kind of had that mindset from young. I knew like I want to make sure that I look a certain way, that I talk and speak a certain way because I know that the career that I desire, um, this is the all time goal of how I want to be. Like if I, when I get to doing celebrity hair, which I, I have done dealing celebrities, I've uh, been around celebrities. I've dated celebrities. Is I think like the reason I never talk about it is because 
they're people just like us. And in all honesty, some of the shit they be on, I ain't on. I'm just not on. Especially dating them. I'm not on, you know, being in a, a poly type relationship. I'm not I'm not into all that shit. Um mm -mm. Mm -mm. And I think even when I didn't, you know, when I was still getting my, my funds and stuff together, um, I wasn't just about to date nobody just because they could do those things for me. Now, I, I definitely feel like you should have somebody that can do the same stuff for you that you can do for yourself. If he don't want to take you on a damn date, if he don't want to um, invest in you mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, um, financially, that's not the man for you. That's not the woman for you. You know, that's not the, the friend for you, the person for you. Um, because as a person, these are the things that I try to, to do and, and really like, I, I really do y'all. I just try to edify people, right? And this is probably gonna get a, a bit chatty and I'm sorry, you know, but I'm just, this is just kind of like where where I'm at today, right? I know the moment for me that I changed, like as a woman, um, was when I had my my when I got pregnant, not when I had my child. When I got pregnant, like I had already had my goals and everything that I wanted to do, but the moments that I knew I was with child, my life. Everything shifted. I'm not saying like I put my goals on the back burner. If anything, I started to pursue them more heavily. And I learned really quick that, you know, when you're in a relationship with somebody, you know, now you got to consider that person. You know, it was one thing to consider like, hey, I'm about to have a child. But now I'm shifting things to accommodate to somebody else who has probably kind of like at the time. He was more inspired by my goals and the things that he saw me doing. Um, because when I met him, he was on a plan to, like, I'm going to be an engineer. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going. So, you know, he thought, like, he was a catch. And the truth was, I was the catch. I was the one playing for churches. I was the one doing hair. I was the one um, going to school for music education. I was the one talking about getting my master's. Um, I was the one that was grounded. Let me say that again. I was grounded. I was the one that believed in God. And not saying he didn't believe in God, but he just wasn't into... He still was on his journey to finding God, which is a big difference, you know. So right there, it was already an imbalance, an, an unequal yoke. But what I'm saying is, like, I think a lot of time as women, we will allow... Um, what we find or feel as love to affect and you know alter should i say um goals and aspirations we have for ourselves. you know we'll start to think like well you know if i help this person you know it, it ultimately it helps me or if i you know do this for them right now then you know i can always come back and do this um and I quickly learned that that was not like what I wanted. Like, you know, although I was content, I was just content because I felt like I was settling. Um, and, and it just wasn't like, but I was cool with settling because I, you know, I was like, well, we got, we got kids. But that's just not, that wasn't what I wanted for myself. And as soon as, um, I decided to move and get, just do something different. My life changed, my life shifted, you know? And I started to pray, like God put, you know, to be specific, I, I, I believe in specific prayers. I said, God, just align me with five people that are going in the direction that I'm trying to go in, you know, that are doing the things that I'm trying to do. And you'd be surprised, y'all, the people that you at the same time sorry my camera cut off i didn't realize that when i was praying for that he was going to remove people too and i think when it's not mutual like because i always had that mindset right 
I had a lot of unmutual friendships that were not mutual people that were around me to gain and never gave people that were around me that depended on me that depended on me for advice depended on me for finances depended on me for just everything right and it was pretty draining i would find myself drained in some of these friendships i would find myself drained in some of these family ships i would find myself drained um in my next relationship right and so you have to quickly realize that when something is not mutual when something is not for you when something is not edifying you it is okay to walk away it is okay to leave i think that we struggle a lot of times i well let me not say we i did i used to and sometimes i still do i used to struggle with um telling a person hey i don't like this but still wanting to be like their friend like i like you as a person but i don't like this shit you're doing or hey i don't like this in this relationship but still want to be with that person because i felt like the good outweighed the bad mm -mm. don't do it to yourself walk a way you have to learn to walk a way walk away from things that don't serve you walk away from the things that god is trying to pull you from i can't tell you how many of my friends and and not even just my friends even myself um and don't get me wrong i would never turn back and take away the fact that i have gone through the pregnancy experiences that i've had or the children that i i do have but however um I don't know i feel like sometimes we wind up with kids with a person and then we'll be like well why did god allow this to happen that ain't god because god was giving you the signs and you chose to stay you know but in in every lesson there's a blessing so for me my blessings are tony robin and sydney my blessings are the children that i miscarried and are in in heaven you know um i think we just we have to quit Sometimes we got to quit y'all and, and y'all may not like what I'm about to say, but sometimes we got to quit trying to make an excuse for our behavior. It ain't always God. It ain't always the other person. Sometimes it's us. Bitch, we just choose bad people. You know, and it's not, may not be intentionally. We may just have bad choices in men and it may not be intentionally, may not even be something learned, you know, because I know for me, um, I wouldn't say he's a bad person, my children's father, but he was not for me, if that makes sense. And I didn't grow up in a house where I saw the things that I went through. You know, I never saw, um, my grandfather abused my grandmother or my grandmother abused my grandfather right i never saw them argue i never saw um certain things and i'm not gonna say that shit probably didn't happen but i'm just saying i didn't see those things i wasn't raised around those things and i had a pretty happy home and a happy childhood right y'all have to blend out i don't care if it is just one shadow make it make it gradient and if you don't know what i'm saying like make sure it has depth add add depth where you need to add depth and blend where you need to blend to lighten it up um so anyways yeah y'all just stop stop settling for what's not mutual stop settling for what like doesn't edify you okay um and if you're stuck and you're you're one of them people you're like well Shit, I know I need to end it. I just, I don't know how to end it. Y'all, that's where shit get real. That's where shit get hard because whew, I think a lot of us as, a lot of times as women, like I like I got that spirit of block, blockation. I, baby, I will cut you off. I will leave, you know, but it's kind of like I told y'all the other day in my um, previous video. I'll tolerate some shit while I'm with you. I will tolerate some shit while I'm with you. But then when I'm gone, baby, when I'm gone, I'm out. 
When I, when I tell you I'm done, I'm out. It ain't no for me when I stop arguing. I don't care no more. No. When I tell you that first motherfucking time, hey, I feel unhappy. I'm already in in my mind like, okay, this don't serve me. Um, I'll see. I'll see if we can work through this. I'll see if this is something um, we can both agree needs work and we work towards changing. But if I don't feel like that shit is mutual, I'm not because 40 year old me is not going to go through what I went through when I was fucking 20 and even in my 30s. I'm not. I just turned 40. I'm not about to spend um, years and years of my life waiting on somebody to change. Why? Why would I do that to myself? After everything I've, I've been through in my life, why would I? Why would I? Why? What am? What am I waiting on? Even if I was 20, I'm not. You know, it's just it's too many people in this world for us to sit up and be like this is the end all be all. You know, it's just it's just. And I don't know. Maybe that's my mentality. I would tell you if it's a friendship you're trying to end. Um, if it's a relationship you're trying to end, see, it makes it look different because if you don't live with a person, it's so easy to cut stuff off. Um, and don't get me wrong because we don't live with our friends, but some, some of our friends do try to, you know, move in and stay with us or may need time because I've let a lot of people, y'all, stay with me. I'm trying to get this off, y'all. I'm trying to, it's just not coming off. I don't know why. The plastic. There you go. Um, so when it comes to friends that you're trying to cut off, what what I would say is stop calling. Stop making yourself accessible. See, the issue is not you cutting them off. The issue is you making them yourself accessible. And you need to ask yourself why. Why am I making myself accessible to a person that I know um we have grown apart or serves no purpose or is hurting me why am i why am i trying to fix something that i know i don't need to be fixing like this is the sign and i know it's the sign for me to move on and do whatever it is i need to do for me right those are the questions you should ask not ask how do i leave ask why am i staying why am I staying? What is keeping me to stay? I know a lot of times, um, if it's relationships and even in some friendships, sometimes friends move in together and be financially dependent on the other person and you know all of that. Um, and that can make you feel like, damn, I don't have this to go here. I don't want to put family in my business. But let me tell you something. If you're saying you want to leave, I'm not telling you put people in your business, but when you really want to leave something, you're going to leave. You're not going to give a fuck about, because because that's really, it's, it's selfish, y'all, and it's entitled. I don't want to put them in that. I don't want to do this. this that's a, a negatively selfish way of thinking, because you don't have to put people in your business to say, hey, right now, I, I may need to come stay with you for this amount of time. I'm changing some things in my life, and I just... I need some some help I've never had to go stay with anybody uh, but I have thought about it when I wanted to get away from certain people you know and I think for me because just me having the thoughts that is why I always was like when people would call me and be like they needed that outlet they needed that help they were trying to get back that's why I helped because you just never know somebody's situation and I would ever I would hate to tell somebody no to something and find out something happened that I could have helped them on you know um and so forth but y'all figure out why you can't leave figure out why you can't leave and then you will be able to leave cuz for me when I thought about walking away from my marriage, 
I evaluated everything right before I did anything. Um, I tried every avenue before I decided to make any moves. And then I did what I felt because when I was like, well, why am I staying? Or why would I stay? Should I say, not why am I staying, but why would I continue to stay when I know that things are this way and I feel this way? Um, I don't like to make decisions based off of emotions. I never really do. I'm a person that I think things through. What I would say is if you're a person that makes decisions off of emotions, take the fucking emotion out of it. Take the emotion out of it and then make your decision and you'll, you'll never regret your decision. Um, when you find out why or what would you stay for and why, you'll be able to leave. Okay? Um, and I think like it's just so funny because I think a lot of times we get caught up in I want this type of lifestyle and I want that type of lifestyle and we'll stay for that, right? Because everybody want to have a certain type of lifestyle and everybody want to live a certain type of way and everybody want to put on for everybody. But y'all, I think once you understand that blessings are luxuries, your peace is a luxury, your well-being and self-care is a luxury, your mental Stability is a luxury. You will quit being fixated with all these things that really are not fucking worth it, y'all. Really, just really not worth it. Y'all, I do. Whenever I use um, foundation, I go between sponges and brushes. And that's how I get that really skin like seamless stuff even with a full coverage um, foundation. That's how I do it. I will stipple and stipple and pat and pat and pat and bounce and bounce and bounce and come back in. I use multiple brushes, not just on myself, but on clients too. Um, I just feel like it's how you get the best looking foundation. Still full coverage, but that's just what it is. Um, so I just think y'all, y'all got to be careful because you know, with different levels in your life come different demons and different opportunities and different challenges and thoughts and all these different things i forgot to put on my primer i forgot to prime my face did i prime my face or did i forget i think i forgot to prime my face matter of fact i know i forgot to prime my face <laughs> i will glass me girl i forgot i forgot I was sitting here like, I, I can see like this little bump, a little texture. Hmm. We be all right. Um, we just gonna be in the house for today. So we be all right. But I did forget to prime my face. So I apologize. Cause I was talking to y'all. So it is what it is. Um, Life is too short not to be to be happy, not to be um, content, not to do what serves you and makes you the best version of you. You know, Am I, I know I just bought a new a whole new chocolate. This this should not be out. She should not be out, honey. That's, that's really what it is. Like, 
you have to really do what makes you feel at your best. You cannot worry about other people, how they feel. If you have children, put them first. And what I mean by put them first, don't put them before yourself. Because if you don't have what you need for yourself, you can't give to your kids, you can't give to your husband, you can't give to whoever. What I mean by put them first is think about what it is you're wanting to provide and give to the to your child. What is it that you're trying to teach your child? I'm not talking about spoiling them. I'm not talking about enabling them. I'm not talking about pacifying them. What is the lesson when you sit back in your life and you think about all that you've done and you've been through, what would your greatest accomplishment be as a mom when it would come to a lesson for your child or an accomplishment for your child or something that your child would take and teach to other people in his or her age group? This could be at any age. I'm not just talking about once your child is an adult right what is it that you want to teach your kids for me i want to teach my kids the word of god for me i want to teach my my kids that god is the the first the beginning the last the foundation the everything because when i teach them that they are are equipped for everything else when i can stand back and know that my child knows how to pray my child knows how to pray and fast my child knows how to go to the scripture my child knows that no matter what they're feeling, no matter how they feel or what they've done, that God loves them no matter what. And that behind that love, their mama loved them no matter what. My job is done. My job is done. Because I can only teach my children in the way that they should go. I can't live through them. I can't... Um, get upset with their decisions i can be disappointed i can try to polish it up for them i can try to fix it because i'm mommy you know but ultimately ultimately y'all they are from the time they are born they're on their journey of their life just like we were once that age and we had goals and aspirations that we sh shared or didn't share our kids have the same thing and you know you cannot sit up there and because i've seen people do it y'all i've seen people do it i see people still do it to people that are adults um i've been guilty of allowing family to stop all he Stop. Allowing family to um, kind of like persuade and control things that I knew I wanted, in, you know, just in directions I didn't want to go, you know, um, make choices and, and pick men for me that weren't for me, you know. So I just I've gotten to that point now to where I feel like anything I do. It's going to be my motherfucking choice. It's going to be what Bo Raven chooses to do. If I don't want you around me, you ain't going to be around me. If I want you around me, you're going to be around me. And it's simple as that. And you're going to be there till I feel it's it's just not what it is. And and that's, I don't care. That's, that's anybody. That is anybody. I normally don't do the honey, but I'm trying to really get like a really bright under eye today. So I'm going in with the honey. Not too much. Because I ain't trying to be Casper. I never was into Casper the Friendly Ghost. So I ain't trying to be Casper. Okay. I'm just going to press that in in that area.
I don't want to go too light, but I think I'm going to do one more. Because I don't ever let it bake. I kind of press it in and dust it off. But I am going to come back with my um, pressed powder, which is not a translucent. And oh, I'm sorry, that was the highlighter. Right? And then I'm going to go over, over this to just really polish it up and set it. I know a lot of people, you know, I grew up with uh, my biological mom, right? Her whole thing was, oh, I hate the holidays. I hate the holidays. And y'all don't, I don't think people realize that sometimes they selfishly, um, you know, selfishly, and I'm going to just take what's left over and go in those places. They selfishly implement their things this is what i was talking about earlier about people's feelings and all that shit they they implement all their insecurities and their things because okay if you don't like the holidays that don't mean fuck up our holiday or mate like some of the stuff with my biological mom where me and her have some issues some of those things took place during the holidays you know and it's really because she was taking shit out on me she can try to say oh no you did this. you was being ugly behind this this like, it's ways, man, you can scorn a child. And I think with me, like, the way I moved past a lot of that is, like, I just, I had to pray and ask God to teach me how to forgive. A lot of people say they forgive. No, like, now nah, I ain't never forgot, you know, but I have forgiven. And because I forgave, I found peace within myself. And, y'all, that's really true. I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, that's that's a real thing. If, if you forgive somebody, it's really for you. It's not fucking for them because they'll probably always walk around with the guilt or they probably don't have no guilt because, you know, they might be a low-down-ass motherfucker that just really don't don't care. So I'm taking my, my foundation powder. They just really don't care, y'all. So, you know, don't give people that type of... Um, thing over you you know don't don't give them that over you ain't, ain't nobody worth that you know nobody is is worth that y'all this is so pretty I, I hope it's showing up on camera um it just comes out so seamless y'all feel how many times i done picked up these sonya sponges versus my beauty blender I ain't trying to throw her away, girl. She's still that girl, but she Beyonce. She Riri. Both bad bitches. Just two different calibers, okay? <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and contour our face. Y'all know I like to do my cream, and then I come back and I set it with my powder. I usually use my um, Juvia's Place. I think it's deep as deep as bronze or deep as dark. Um, but I be using my my Patrick Store when I really like his products. I haven't tried them all. I've seen his blushes. I'm interested in getting the blushes. I've seen some of his uh I think it was the mascara and eyeliners. I've seen some people have, and I always take my contours and stuff up high and I go on top of my cheek because I have high cheekbones. And since my face is now more full than it used to be, right? Um, I just have to contour my face differently, you know, because shit, you know, your face change. My face ain't as slim as it was when I was weighing a hundred and some pounds. I am now heavier, so of course, my face is shaped differently. I got this wig on today. Let's see. I don't care because I'm still not going to contour around the wig. I'm going to contour around where I contour which is or my sides. I like to come down right above my eyebrows. Y'all know this. That's just how I create my warmth. And I do like to chisel out where my cheek was. Now it may make this look a little bit bigger, but let me give y'all the trip. The trick. Blend it up and not down, right? Well, this is the thing. If you wanna lift, blend up. 
if you want to make this look smaller, blend down. So I kind of usually go around the cheek and then I V right just a little bit, right? Just to create like a, a fake ab for the neck, right? And that's what it is, a fake ab for the neck. And I try to just chisel it out, but I like it to be soft. So even though I like, I go real heavy right here on the jawbone. This is my jawbone. I go real heavy right there, right? And then I'm going to soften all that up, and I'm gonna show y'all how in just a second. But let me finish this part. Uh, I don't put the cream to sit there. I've actually been taking the Patrick store and I've been going inside of here and just making it so that it looks like my nose is more contoured. Cause y'all know how I feel about that contour of the nose. I ain't the biggest on trying to look like I got no white person nose. I love my black ass nose. Even though I thought about having nose surgery a couple times. That's neither here nor there. I blend everything up. Yeah, y'all, I hope y'all feel encouraged by our little talk today. Um, I don't know, y'all. Those things were kind of like on my heart. It's the holiday season. I know a lot of people struggle during, during, during the holidays, and a lot of people thoroughly enjoy the holidays. Right now, I think my family is in town. I was supposed to be out of town this week, but God saw for different plans, and with the weather and everything else, I'm going to keep my ass because it's like 10 degrees outside. We don't do that here in Texas, okay? So, I just, it just is what it is. So, I come back in, and I just use the, the first one because them other two, baby, this one is deep enough for me. Baby, she black enough for me. I always deposit my powder up. because then it gives me somewhere to kind of like blend it down to. You really want it to get snazzy. You know, you could take some of your highlighting and really chisel all that out. I ain't doing all that. I ain't doing all of that. When my allergies going, y'all, I typically don't do a lash. But y'all know the look ain't never really complete without a lash. You could do your natural lash, you know, and still look cute and snazzy. But if y'all notice, I only have a glue down right here today. <laughs> Okay. Go between the first two shades. Not a lot on that second shade because she do look a little reddish brown. And I come right in here underneath my brow. Y'all see me underneath my brow? I'm not in my brow. I come underneath my brow first and I start to kind of just carve in the direction the flow of my brow and that part of my nose. Almost like I'm coloring, bitch. Right. I try not to put it in my brow because I've already set my brows and how I want my brows to go. And I just kind of take my time and, and just get the bridge of my nose right there. Because when I do the bridge of my nose, it gives that illusion that it's already contoured. Now here I make a little triangle, right? Just like that. Because when you just do it straight down, it just, it, I don't know, to me, it's just enough. That's kind of perfect. So I'm basically blending that satin powder and that together, right? Then I take what's left over on my brush and just kind of come right back in there and soften it up some more. And it's snatched. She snatched, she snatched, she snatched, she snatched. I don't like no lines. So, my contour is done. At this point, like, 
if you wanted to chisel out with highlight, you could. That's not really my thing. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. I wanted my brighter spots to be really right here today. And that's kind of where I have them. If you really wanted to um, kind of finesse the whole look, you could take a little bit more pressed powder and stipple it on all over. Not a lot, not a lot. It just gives that I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all between the liquid and the the pressed it just gives a really bitch it just it gives okay all right so after contour we move to blush and highlight now I don't really know if I'm gonna do well I do have a highlighter out today but it's more in my pink tone because I'm trying to do a pink blush today what did I do with my blush? I had the Juvia's palette blush out. Oh, here it go. So I like to put my blush up high. Y'all know that I always have. Sometimes I like to put my blush on the apples of my cheeks. Sometimes I like to put it up in my cheeks. It just depends on the look that I'm going for um, today. Ooh, I don't know what color I want to do. What color is Soleil? Ooh, baby, she, 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 ooh, y'all know that Juvia's place get. You know what, though? It's not, she not that bad. Let's, um, we just gotta be careful with her, because she, she real pigmented. Or let me see, do I want this rosy color? Ooh, that's pretty. That's pretty. That's, that's prettier. Let me go with that one, because I have that Fenty out. So I'm in there, baby. I'm digging and I'm putting, and I'm starting up here with this part of the, right? Because it gets, you see that? How it, it just puts it up there for me. And that's where I want my blush today. Y'all remember when we was little and they used to put the blush on the tip of the nose? Y'all remember that? Maybe she pink pink. All right. I may not put that highlighter because I was going to try to like layer my pinks. But let's see after we get to blending. I'm putting my blush today on top of my contour. So I have everything sitting up, up, up today. Instead of on my line, it's sitting up today. Thing is when you start up high you can you can move it down if you need to yeah that's perfect that's really perfect i don't know what i want to cook today y'all you know christmas eve is tomorrow this is probably the first christmas i ain't cooked because we're supposed to be going to my brothers so i don't know since i ain't going to lake charles i guess i will show my face but i ain't planning to stay all day you know I just, I ain't, I ain't never been one to go to other people's house for Christmas. I get it. But that's just not my thing. Stop, Augie. Stop. It's not my thing. Um. So here left is just really deciding on um, finishing. Now let me tell y'all something. Y'all see my eyes, right? So I always, whenever I line my eyes, if I do them, the bolder I do them, the smaller my eye look. My my natural eye always pops more um, when I do a very thin line because if I do it just a little thick, it takes away from, just like when I don't wear lashes, my eyes look bigger, but when I put on lashes, my eyes look smaller. That's why I like wispy lashes. I don't think I'm gonna go with any of the glitter. I was gonna put on my um, Sun Get, uh, Sangera Sunset. But y'all know Rihanna, she do a lot of that glitter. But I just, you know what? I'm, I'm, mm. Oh, see, see, it got glittery on me. We're gonna have to just keep that one up. I have to make it match now. That'll be my highlight and my blush for today. I'm gonna keep that up high because I don't want that glitter all in my face. 
I love Rihanna's Rihanna's line with some of her glitters. And I know this is meant to be a highlight, but I don't really be wanting all that glitter in my face like that. Um, not all the time. Not all the time. But that sponge will take most of it. Most of it out. So I ain't worried about it. I'm to darken my birthmark because y'all know she is the signature of she is. So we have to, even though we've put full coverage and she's disappeared, he, she must appear with back. Yes. She must appear with back. We, we like real life over here. Okay, y'all, I'm, I'm loving the look for today. I wasn't really sure on what look I was going to do today. But I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm not sure if I'm going to put liner. I think I might just do lashes, like mascara, lashes, um, line my lips, and do a gloss. Because y'all know I'm always known for my lipsticks, but I might just do a gloss. And I think I'm going to do... Out of Kim K's, I don't remember what little lipstick combo this was, but the one I'm going to put on is going to be um, Supermodel, 90s Supermodel. That's what I'm going to put on my lips. She's definitely a mat. I have been exfoliating my lips, y'all. And then we're gonna come back with number six. This is my favorite shade in her Kim K lip gloss um, thing. And we're gonna go over it. Okay, and where I need to go in and just kind of fill in to get what I want. Is what I will do. Oh, it's so pretty. I don't really like the brown liner look, so I like mine to really be overlapped, kind of. And then that gives me like the lip look that I'm looking for. So that's my lip. That's my lip, girl. I'm gonna clean off my thing. I really could just pull off doing some mascara today. I really could just pull off the mascara, but let's get a lash going. Here is the finished look. I feel like is I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Cause y'all know I usually do my reds, but I'm going with my Kim. I got tons of lipsticks and I just don't be wearing them. Um, tons of makeups right now. I'm just into my single palettes. I kind of like the only difference is um they always had like a brown on her lips so my eye inspiration is kind of like since i saw the whitney movie last night i wanted to go with the single um shadow of course i don't think whitney ever did a fake lash she always did her natural lashes but i'm doing a fake lash for today i asked bay fake or not fake he told me to put on the lash so i did the lash but i thought they was cute without the lash and right now what's in is the new lips so i just did kind of like the nudish lip but y'all know i'm all for um my reds my deep 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 reds burgundies especially in the winter and fall so um i hope y'all enjoyed this chit chat get ready with me for today i'm gonna go edit all this Make sure you subscribe for more content like this thumbs up this let youtube know y'all liked it talk to y'all later I really should have got my name engraved on them, but I didn't at the time because I was like, why would I put my name on my bottle? Now I want my name on that.